The Volkswagen Golf is in the market for 45 years now, and Volkswagen says every 40 seconds they sell a Volkswagen Golf somewhere in the world. Now they present the new, the eighth generation of the car, and this Golf should be the most modern, the most connected, the most safety, and the most fuel efficient one. How the new Golf drives, what else it delivers, let's find out now. Really new with the new Golf is how you control the car here at the interior. So you will not find any buttons, any knobs anymore. So for instance, left side of the steering, you do find a panel where you can control the lights of the car. Um, beneath the touchscreen, you do find two controls left and right for the heating inside of the car. And there is a touch bar in the center where you can easily control by swiping different um, functions of your car. And it goes so far, that you do not find a standard gear shift knob anymore if you drive the automatic car. You will only find a very nice and tiny joystick here at the center console. A real eye-catcher is the new, unfortunately optional, head-up display. It offers high resolution and shows all important informations for the journey. The new Golf is 1 meter 79 in width, and this is about a centimeter less than its predecessor. But it features the new Volkswagen logo at the front, and I think more important, it features new lights, because the new Golf comes as standard, always with LED lights, but there is a lot more to explore. With, with IQ, IQ Light, light Volkswagen, Volkswagen now also offers, offers LED, LED Matrix headlights for the Golf. Fun. The Dynamic Light Assist activates up to 10 different partly interactive light functions with the 22 LEDs per headlight. Thanks to the use of map data in combination with driving data such as steering angle and speed, as well as the images from the front camera, the road is perfectly illuminated depending on the situation. My test car is featuring the 2-liter diesel engine and that delivers 110 kilowatts or 150 horsepower and um, offers 360 newton meters of maximum torque and this is combined in my car with a seven speed dsg so a double clutch transmission and that package really works well with the car it's not a new drivetrain but still very nice and absolutely fine for the golf so you do have enough power to drive the car a bit more sporty or you can just enjoy a very comfortable drive and um, so this really is a package that works well important to know is that the car now is even more quiet than its predecessors. You do not hear anything from the wheels. You do only hear a little bit of the engine. So I really have to say this really is a step forward when we talk about this car and its predecessor. Looking at the side of our test car, you of course find instantly these big wheels, 18 inch alloys, but what a pity, they are not standard. You may find smaller ones with a base model. But looking at the whole shape of the car, this really looks like a typical Golf. You find the typical proportions and you find this big C pillar as well. But the car looks different. And the reason for that is the Golf now is 4 meters 28 in length. And this is 2 centimeters more than its predecessor. But I think more important, it's only 1 meter 46 in height. And this is 3 centimeters less. On top, the wheelbase has grown by 2 centimeters as well. And this gives the car completely more stretched, more long and of course more dynamic look. The new Golf does, as its predecessor, feature more than enough space for driver and co-driver. So as you can see, I'm quite tall, nearly two meters, and I do sit very comfortably in the car. I do have hat space left, so really very comfortable. But how about the space behind me? Let's find out while having a short stop. So now I make a short stop to see if I can sit behind me, but today I have an assistant. So, and now let's see if I can fit in, because I sit in front of me as well. So, yeah, the good news is I do fit in. I still have a bit of space in front of my knees, but the reason is I do really sit very upright at the front. Um, the seat is completely down to the ground, so I have no room for my feet at all. And yeah, headroom, yeah, my hair, this is, this is touching the ceiling, but I'm not the standard person. So I think if somebody with one meter 80, sits at the front and 180 at the rear, and they're maybe 75 kilo each. That should work for a longer distance as well. The seats the car features really are very comfortable and they do offer more than enough support, even when you drive a bit more sporty. And on top of this, you do find, yeah, enough space for your elbows, knees and everything. And what I really do like, even though we do have this massive C pillar, you really have a very nice surround view inside your Golf. Looking at the rear of the new Golf, at first glimpse, it really looks a lot like its predecessor, but some things really have changed. So for instance, you do now find 
as standard LED taillights, but if you want, you can have, let's say, a higher lighting standard, which then comes with a dynamic indicator, as well with this so-called click lock effect when you brake. This brings you more attention regarding to the cars and the driver behind you. On top of this, you do now find, of course, the new Volkswagen logo at the rear as well, and the Golf signature beneath it. So this is what is new with the new Golf's rear. The Golf, of course, features all the, let's say, must-have driver assistance and safety systems as standard. So, for instance, it comes with lane assist as standard, and it comes with an emergency braking system, which not only recognizes pedestrians, it also recognizes wildlife, it also recognizes um, cyclists. And this is something where I say, yeah, that really is a plus regarding to safety. But, of course, you can have a lot more. There's loads more to configure. And very important is there is one really new thing you can have for the new Golf as well. In addition, it comes with an evasion assist and a new turn assistant as standards. If that's not enough, you can make your Golf even more comfortable and safer with the IQ Drive system. So, for example, the new predictive cruise control, the traffic jam and assist and the exit assistant are available as well. Talking about materials and craftsmanship, of course, if you buy a Volkswagen, you expect good craftsmanship, and this is what you do find with the new Golf as well. Um, but this is something you expect. But on the other hand, when we talk about materials, you of course find soft touch down here, soft touch here, soft touch here, and very nice surfaces when we talk about the dashboard, when we talk about the door panels. But if you go beneath the level of the dashboard, you do find plastic everywhere. And I have to say, with a new Golf, that's a bit disappointing. Standing at the rear of the car, let's have a look into the boot. With the rear seats up, the new Golf offers, as its predecessor, 380 liters of boot capacity. But when you fold down the rear bench, that increases now up to 1,237 liters. And this is, by the way, about 35 less than with the predecessor. As standard, the Golf now features a fully digital cockpit, so you will not find a standard instrument cluster anymore in the car. But of course, you can configure this digital cockpit the way you want, and if you want this round stuff, you can have it. On top, the car comes as standard with an 8.5-inch touchscreen for the infotainment, um, but you can have a lot more. So if you want, you can have up to even more than 10-inch, and if you want, you can order the new Innovision cockpit as well. There are eight new drivetrains for the new Golf, and they include petrol, diesel, natural gas, mild hybrids, and plug-in hybrids. And when you will find all the engines available, they will give you a power range between 90 up to more than 300 horsepower. One of the most important innovations regarding to the engines of the Golf are the three new mild hybrids with 48-volt technology. They offer 81, 96 or 110 kilowatts maximum power and will be available shortly after the market launch. Also new is the plug-in hybrid, which draws its 150 or 180 kilowatt system power from the combination of a 1.4 liter petrol engine and an electric motor. Thanks to a 13 kilowatt hour battery, more than 50 kilometers of pure electric range should be possible. If you talk about Golf, you have to talk about practicability. And so the car offers the storage you need. So you have big storage compartments in the doors. Um, you do find another compartment here at the center console, quite big. And this is the one where you do find the uh, optional wireless charging. On top of this, you have a small part here next to the gear shifter. And you do, of course, find two cup holders here in the center console, which you can just um, push away and then you, have, then you have a bigger uh, compartment here. On top of this, of course, beneath the armrest, there is another small compartment. Very important with the Golf is that you do find uh, at the center console two USB ports, but you have to be aware of these are USB-C ports, so you may need an adapter for your mobile phone. And important is the new Golf features Apple CarPlay now wireless, so you do not really need to have your cable with you. Thanks to the shift by wire, the automatic transmission is now more clever. Already while driving forward at slow speed, you can choose R. And only when the speed is low enough, the transmission switches gently into reverse gear. Volkswagen is not allowed um, to tell us any official numbers regarding to the fuel consumption yet. But um, the first car I drove was the 150 horsepower petrol car with a, a manual gearbox. And that car used 
a bit less than seven liters per hundred kilometer driven. So I think quite a nice number. Now the diesel is a bit more efficient. And so the number I have here in my uh, um, system at the moment is a bit less than 6.5 per hundred kilometer driven. But if you drive the Golf a bit more easy, the consumption can be lowered towards five liters of diesel easily. That was my first test drive with the new Volkswagen Golf 8. What really is new with the new Golf is the completely control inside of the car because you do not find any buts, buttons, knobs or something like only touch sensors. So this is something you really have to get used to, but I really do like it. What for me is one of the highlights of the new Golf are the new driver assistance and safety systems because they provide you with more assistance, more security and they are a lot more comfortable and now the car really drives nearly autonomously. On top of this, you do find the brand new head-up display, which I really do like a lot because this is a full head-up display. So I would say I would tick the box there when it comes to extras in my car. What I didn't get is the new the price for the new Golf, but they told me the base model will be less than 20,000 euros in Germany. I didn't get the chance to drive one of the new plug-in hybrids or mild hybrids, so I'm really looking forward to drive that one because that, I think, is the future for the new Golf.